Just making some intercooler piping for the new F12V. Ooh, 412L. Ooh, look at that. Would you just, would you just, would you just go ahead? Oh, hello. Some of y'all may be like, James, <laughs> that cut's not very square. And to that, I would say, right you are. Today, we're doing pie cuts. Pie cuts are wonderful because you can make complex curves. And I'm going to kind of just give you a brief overview because a lot of you don't give a two, two flipping flatulating shits about none of this but it's okay it's okay because uh, for those of you who do care you may wind up a little bit brighter we got ourselves right here the little template same length legs on either side with roughly a 50 degree bend here we have our first section of pipe cut 90 degrees on this side and seven and a half degree cut on that side seven and a half degrees why you ask well because seven and a half and seven and a half is 15. you put two 15s together you got 30. Another 15 added to that, you got 45. And then when you put six of them together, you got a 90. How cool is that? Yeah. And then you can make complex bends, rotations. You can make it go up, over, around, beyond, between, through, beside. Adjectives. First thing you want to do in order to make pie cuts is you want to take and make two marks 180 degrees from each other. Well, how do you do that on a round piece of pipe, you ask? Well, let me just go ahead and blow your mind. First off, you got to know what the diameter of the pipe is. Once you know that, you multiply that by pi. Once you multiply that by pi, you get that number. Half that number, that gives you your 180 mark. So you put your first part just any old place you want to, and then go 180 from there, which would be whatever measurement you come up with. In my case, it's nine. Oh, God, no, sorry, not nine. Nine and a half is overall. It's a, uh, warm it up, four and 13 sixteenths. I got it. Whew. Man, I almost forgot. And the reason you do that is because you want to take and flip this every single time. You want to flip it over, 180, whenever you make the cut, because you don't want to have to change your saw over every time. <laughs> Am I right? Unless you like hard work, in which case, uh, by all means. But this just keeps it cut, uh, squared away, so that way when you put your pie cuts together, you can line them back up to make whatever angles you want. You know what I'm saying? Now we cut from this side up with it flipped the other way, so now we got to flip it the opposite direction, cut this way down, so that we'll have what looks like a slice of pie cut out of there it'll be 15 degrees you want to set your course for the blade to be about three eighths of an inch ish on the bottom side that way it cuts nice and wide on the top the way your welds don't overlap each other you know what i'm saying now this is all rough estimentary but you just look over the top of the blade and you can see that, that in line is about three eighths to a half inch somewhere along in there which is good it means your welds won't overlap you got plenty of meat everybody's happy now that that's cutting I'll get a pie out of there and then we'll line it up next to that one and you'll see how I'm going to make a bend. It's going to be pretty swagoo. Now this kind of stuff right here is just for your backyard warrior that wants to take and fit some shit up. Now if we were actually running some length of pipe, then you know everything would have to be far more meticulous than just eyeballing it. It would have to make sure you didn't have dog legs and things like that because if you're off, that's your job. In this case, uh, you know, just get her close. That's all you gotta do, because you got rubber fittings inside there for your boost tubes. And uh, when you got rubber fittings, there's a little bit of play here and there. You know, metal flanges, there is no play. Well, I mean, there is some, but boy, it's a fight. Got our second pie cut done. See how that works out? Look like a slice of pie. Look like a 3 8 little lip right here. The reason we do that is because this is cut on a seven and a half degree angle. The reason I done that was because I needed to have a little bit more bite than on a 45. But when you take it and you mismatch it, you get a straight piece of pipe again. And when you flip it over and line the two marks up, you get a rotated curve. Nice and smooth. Like I said before, this line's on this side. You break your saw loose, you rotate him 180 degrees till you get that line up on top. Once again, you just kind of eyeball it because this is not perfection. And you slide it up, make your saw cut about a 3 8 tab on the back side out to a pie cut, and then add it to it. And there you go. For those angles, I mean, your common, your common lobster cut or pie cut, whatever you want to call them, is either 9 or 18. Those are your most common. I'm choosing 15 just because it takes less to make a 45. 18, you get a little bit more than a 45, you know, so on and so forth. But if you want to get minute details of a degree, all you got to do is break a cut open a little bit on the back side, a little bit open on the inside, and then you can change your degree ever so slightly to get... You know, you're 40, you're 43, 45, 46, 46 in two minutes of a degree, whatever the case may be, but this is all just generic stuff. We're just plumbing in a turbo, you know? Nothing major. All right. 
Now we got two cleaned up pie cuts. There and there. Bang, bang. You can stand him up like so. Flip your lines the other way. Line them back up like they were previously. And then you get a straight piece of pipe. See how that works? Then you rotate it 180 degrees and line your marks back up. And then you have a 30 degree face. Because two 15s put together is 30. On a seven and a half, that's 37 and a half degrees. And then we're going to cut the next one on a seven and a half, and that'll give us a 45. Nice! Back to what I was talking about before, about your minutes of the degree. See how this doesn't line up here? All I got to do is open this one up a little bit, open this one up a little bit, and that one up a little bit, and that'll bring me in five degrees to make a 50 degree angle. Sharp. And I'll let the paint dry, and then it'll be an install, and she's uh, ready to go, you know? Blam, 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 blam. The older, slung-together piping, and then the new fit-up, the one that's supposed to be in there. Yes. Pie cuts, baby. Now, the only reason I did this mod is because there was talk on the uh, interwebs that this modification from a two and a half inch to a three inch intercooler, along with a three inch intake pipe, could produce as much as 50 horsepower. Now, I don't think that much is going to happen, but I'm hoping at least fuel economy and a little better spool up and a little better on the EGT's exhaust cast temperatures. As long as I get that, I think I'll be all right. Just an update it is running cooler. And it feels a lot more fluid, like there's nowhere near as much throttle necessary to go as hard as it would before. And whenever you lay down in it, there's a very noticeable difference. Very noticeable. I don't know if it's 50 horsepower worth of noticeable difference, but it's noticeable. So I'm probably pushing every bit of 400 and some horsepower now. But by the way, I've got to give a huge shout out to the one-legged wonder, Justin Hitt, for hooking me up with that 94 uh, intake horn. He found it for a hell of a deal and got me one because I'm doing him a little side project. Appreciate it, brother.